Hey everyone, so I'm going to do a quick little rundown of how to install and um, also a little review of this uh, BMG extruder. Uh, this is from, um, I believe it was Yu Song Shine was what the, uh, what this, what this is labeled as. But obviously these are, um, these are quite common. There's a bunch of different manufacturers making them. So this one includes a little mounting bracket if you're gonna kind of do your own little thing and set up your own little machine or if you need the mounting bracket. Also includes the required screws, the Allen wrenches, uh, wrenches, that's the tensioner screw and that's the gear that would fit on your stepper motor. Um, also they include a little piece of um, the Bowden tube here which would go on the bottom end of the extruder to um, help guide filament in there. Uh, what I actually did um, for my setup, because my printer actually has a filament runout sensor installed from the factory, so I created this little guy. So this should, if all my measurements were correct, I haven't tested this out yet, but this should get me, um, allow me to mount my, my um, filament runout sensor here mount this to the machine with the same mounting holes and then obviously the extruder motor and the um, the extruder itself there so i'm going to take this apart um, take apart my old um, extruder and kind of get this thing fitted up and show you what that looks like i went ahead and got started on removing some of this stuff um, just for the sake of time here so obviously we um, pulled our filament out, got our Bowden tube out of the top of our extruder here. And then to remove our extruder, we have three screws, one up here, one down here, and one in this corner. That just simply pops right off. Um, the motor will be loose. I actually have it unplugged already, but the motor will be loose. so. Be on the lookout for that you're gonna have to catch that guy um, and in my case uh, like i said i do have a filament runout sensor down here i already got one of the screws out i'm gonna yank the other screw out too so that i can get this mount completely um, removed so if you don't want to use the filament runout sensor or if you don't have one you can ignore my whole little spiel about having to change the mount. Um, quite simply, the only other things you would have to do is remove the little set screw right there, pull the gear off, and then I'll show you how it all goes back together. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop this right now, replace my mount, and uh, once we get back into installing the new extruder, I'll pick it up from there. So, um, talk about this for a quick second so the little gear that comes with it this is the actual sprocket that drives the extruder um, the one thing you want to note is that the the um, set screw should actually be facing out not towards the motor so you want to get that in there just like that with the set screw facing the away from the motor um, and you don't want to leave too much of a gap but you also don't want it to be right up against there so that it doesn't spin but once you get that in there, it's just a matter of uh, tightening up the set screw with the included Allen wrench, which should be fairly simple. Um, you don't have to really crank down on this too hard, but you know, get it moderately snug because you should be on one of the flat sides of the motor um, stem anyway. So going from there, so now I've got the new mount fitted up and it looks like it'll work. It's not perfect, but it should be fairly simple, fairly straightforward to get this thing mounted on there. Um, slip your motor through the backside and you're gonna just kind of make sure that all lines up. You may have to wiggle it back and forth or something like that, um, but it shouldn't be too difficult to get on. And then you take your three included screws and just pop those into place. And again, using one of the included Allen wrenches, you can just tighten all that up. I'm actually gonna switch to my little screwdriver that I prefer here because uh, it just makes it a little bit easier than trying to 
work with a Allen wrench while holding other items. So once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and plug my motor back in. Um, and then we'll uh, talk about what you need to do before you're actually ready to start printing. Cause although, you know, it seems like all you gotta do is pop this tube in there and go at it. There's one other step that needs to, needs to be done before we can start printing with this. And that is, um, that is actually on the software side. So, I'll get filament fed into this. Um, shouldn't be too hard to do, but uh, you know, it, it's pretty much just gonna be filament up through this. If you need to, you can open this completely so you can kind of see where you're guiding the filament in. Once that's done, you're gonna take the little thumb screw and the spring and put that through this little slot right here, which is uh, going to act as your tensioner. So you can actually adjust tension on the filament through this little thumb screw. So again, I'm gonna get all that set up, but then I'm gonna do a really quick video just to show you what you need to do as far as getting the software set up. All right, so wanted to go over really quick what we need to do to, as far as the software side, to get the uh, printer to realize that there's a different extruder on there. Um, so, this is just a G-code file. You can do this a couple of different ways. There are, um, you know, there, if you have a firmware that is, um, that is non-standard or, you know, just a custom firmware, you can definitely go in there and just tweak it yourself. In my case, I'm still running stock firmware. So instead of messing with that, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and actually modify a G-code file, or in the case of Cura, for example, you can modify that um, right there in the printer settings, and I'll show you how that works as well. But, so in this case, I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So I have a G-code file for something I've already printed. Um, now, if you look in your G-code file, of course, it's gonna be different for different printers, but in this case, um, we're gonna look, I mean, pretty much for any printer, you want to find that start G code. So that tells the printer where all the settings are, what everything's going to be before it does any kind of printing. So the actual command here is M92. So M92, if you don't have this line, you can just come in here, add it in um, underneath this G28, which is the basically the, the beginning of everything um, before your printer does anything. So. It's added in here under G28, I've got M92 E90, E190, which was my old extruder setting. Um, so you'll wanna go in there and there are various videos, websites, instructions on how to calibrate an extruder. So you'll wanna go in there and find one of those to figure out what number you need to put in instead of this E190. So in my case, what I found for this extruder with my motor, with my printer, was actually 820 was going to be the number that was going to work for me so i'll change this number to 820 um, save this file and once i pop this g code file into my printer it should print um, perfectly with the uh, the new extruder installed now if you wanted to do something for example with um, Instead of doing it this way, you can always, let's see if I can find Cura down here somewhere. Uh, so let me just show you really quick what that looks like in Cura and where you can go to add that in so that you don't have to do it for all your G-code files. Even if you're using non-custom um, non firmware, you can just have this in there in your 
in your slicer profile uh, or in your slicer settings for your printer and it'll save that setting for every print that you do. So for example, in Cura, this is the only one I use because that's all I really know at this point. So here I am in Cura um, to set that up for every print so that you don't have to go in here and manually change it to a G-code file, into every G-code file. If you go to settings, printer, and manage printers, under your um, printer, once you select that, you go to machine settings and Right down here in this box, there is uh, that same G code that we saw in that file. So, in this example, it's, I mean, you, you can see it right here, it's still set up as 190 because I haven't changed it in this G code, um, in the startup G code for Cura. But I have changed it in the file. Um, again, if you change it here and you just simply type in 820, close this, every time you slice something with Cura now, it'll set it up for this extruder. So you don't have to go in there and, and manually do it every time. I was just doing this specific file because I wanted to leave nothing to chance. I wanted to do a 100% side-by-side -side comparison with no other settings being different. Um, so we're going to take that same exact file, which I've already printed once, with the same filament on the same machine, with the only change being the extruder, and see, uh, see what it looks like. So here we are, um, I printed these two skulls, these Terminator skulls. Um, this one was done with the stock extruder that came on my printer, and this one was done with the BMG extruder that I have installed. Um, so you can't really, at first glance, see any kind of differences. but. Uh, the reason I decided to print this is because you have large flat areas as well as a lot of detail um, in the face and then you've got you know smaller structures back here in the neck and all this kind of stuff. So on this stock one you can see where certain things just didn't uh, didn't pan out so great where you have little bits of overhang and little little extra little bits where there shouldn't be any. Whereas if you look at the one with the BMG extruder, we don't have any of that. That's all nice and clean over there. So um, basically, now here's the thing is my my extruder, my stock extruder was actually tuned. It was, it was very spot on. So it was um, probably as good as you can get for just a, a direct drive extruder. In any case, the um, the main benefits to having a BMG extruder installed is that with the reduction gear system that's built into the extruder, there's actually a couple of benefits to it. Um, maybe one little downside, but um, so essentially if you, you know, as you saw earlier, we have to get much higher in as far as the number of steps per millimeter as we, you know, we changed in the G code. Um, that being said is this one with the BMG extruder, this was at, I think, 820 steps per millimeter. The stock one was at 190 steps, which means that with the BMG extruder, you actually have a lot more margin for error. There are a lot more steps. That motor is moving a lot more to put out the same amount of filament. Now, why that's a benefit is because when you have... Um, when you have so many more steps happening for one millimeter of extrusion, what that's telling us is that we have such small movements per movement of the motor that even if we're not 100% spot on with our tuning, we're going to be okay. We're going to get a much cleaner result just because it's, it's, it's going to be a lot more, a lot closer to perfect extrusion versus with our um, with our stock extruder. Now, the other benefit to it is that we also have um, we also have a higher torque. So because because of that reduction gear system that's built into the extruder, we have more torque than, for example, in this guy, right? This is our stock extruder. That's directly driven off the motor. So you can get slippage and all that kind of stuff. Also with a lot of these, um, as you can see on this one, let's turn it this way. 
that's a smooth little idler wheel on there. Whereas with the, um, with the BMG extruder, we have two geared wheels putting out a lot more torque. So you're not going to get any slippage. Um, and also your, you've got two geared wheels that are going to grab onto the filament a little bit better. Uh, also this one being a straight gear tends to deform the filament a little bit, which could, could lead to some issues. Uh, but overall there, there's definitely a huge benefit to it. Um, like I said, I just had, I just had this thing tuned so spot on. That's why we're not noticing huge differences, but, um, you know, there are, there are definitely some, this, uh, this definitely appears to be a little bit smoother as far as the flat areas than this guy, which seems to have slightly more in the, in the amount of ridges. This, we've got lower ridges. It's a lot more smooth. That's me dragging my fingernail across this versus with the stock extruder, that same fingernail catches quite a lot. Um, I get some catching here, but it, the, the ridges are not as deep. It's a little bit smoother. So yeah, definitely overall a uh, very good buy, especially from this seller. This was, um, I believe it was Yu Song Shine was the brand of extruder. And I believe the seller was Sing a Song or I have, I might have it the other way around, but either way, um, definitely a good buy. I think it was right around 20 some odd dollars. Um, definitely worth it. Definitely uh, a good investment and a good, great upgrade. Um, if you need the, um, that file, the, uh, STL file for the mount that I had created and printed, I'm going to have that up on, uh, Thingiverse pretty soon. Just look for JG Aurora A5S BMG mount. So there you have it again, really, really happy with this thing. Um, seems to be a little bit quieter too. Uh, you'll have, you'll have more motor noise but it's not as, it's not as high pitched, let's put it that way. So there you have it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you for the next review.